for listening. It's good to be back at Magic 104. Well, I'll tell you, seems like I've been away for a month, but that trip to Memphis was on its sight. We're going to talk about that and a few other things between now and 10 o'clock. Somebody big just died, and it is Dick Biondi, the radio superstar, radio DJ superstar. I'm Aldo Gandia, and here to eulogize him is Mike North. I love the guy. I mean, he was the first guy I listened to when I was growing up. I mean, Dick Biondi, to me, um, one of the top five rock and roll DJs who ever lived. Uh, you could put him up, and for people that don't know, I've been listening to radio in Chicago since 19... 19- 61, 62. I know everything about everybody who ever has worked in radio, from Wally Phillips to Marty Fay to Dick Biondi to Larry Lujak to Spike O'Dell. Uh, you name them all. I can go all night long like Lionel Richie. The guy that steps out, the guy that had energy, the guy that set that example, the guy that loved what he did. There are radio people that don't love what they do. They do it for the check. There are radio people that work in conservative radio that are liberals, that pretend they're conservatives, and vice versa. They do it for the money. They don't do it for the love. I think that's where, and I met uh, the, the, the two times I met Dick. One time, Rob Feeder had a thing where all the top personalities got together. I forget where it was at. And he was there. And we met for the first time. I told him, hey, I W L does number one I was in the server. I think he was on in Myrtle Beach. Look, the guy got fired uh, probably 26 times. Wow. Which back then, I mean, everybody owned two stations. He would have been blackballed. He was anyway from Chicago for a while and other cities. But he would have never worked after a while because now there's eight stations per city Mm -hmm. so he would have gotten away with his antics for so long bottom line is he kept surviving i remember he had a syndicated show in myrtle beach but the big deal was after being at cfl and um wls i mean those were the two powerhouse stations okay i mean i I can make this the equivalent of, of, of what i've had the opportunity to do work at espn and work at at wscr the tape the same type of thing Mm-hmm. And for a while, I, for six years, I was banished, not banished, but let, I was at Fox. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't on in the Chicago <clears throat> area. That's just the way life is. But that was fine. And he was banished from Chicago. But when the magic came, WJMK, and, and the fire, and they used to do it from, from downtown at the Holiday Inn, and they had the studios upstairs, and when I met him, I thanked him for his energy because that's what I learned from him. And I learned about reading fast commercials from him. Mm-hmm. Those were the two things I learned. Because you got to love what you do. So I love what I do, no matter what I do. As long as there's a microphone, I love it. Or somebody to listen to, I could go. Energy. That's what sold him. And he's the guy that introduced Elvis back in the day. And then introduces the Beatles. And plays them first in the United States, in Chicago, on WLS. And then years later, he was on WLS 94.7, which is an AM station. But it's not. All types of radio goes through certain powerhouse periods. The 60s, he was unbelievable. Yeah, that's when I started following him on LS. Yeah, I, I, I put him up there with Alan Freed. Wolfman Jack, he had more of the look. Yeah. But Beyond, he's a top five guy. Dick Clark, Dick Clark, uh, but Beyond, he's top five. I mean, you don't introduce Elvis and then introduce the Beatles and and still be doing radio in the 90s and 2000s Mm -hmm. with the same energy and don't change. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just so good at what he did. Oh, Mike. Rosemont. Oh, I didn't know that. Mike, um, you mentioned he was fired 23, 24 times. <laughs> what was behind those firings? Oh, oh okay. I got one for you. Okay. He said, and I don't know which, if it was LS or, I, uh, or, or CFL. And by the way, anybody who grew up in the 60s in Chicago knows what great radio is, music radio. I'll name you all the DJs. 
I listen to them the nightly. Barney Pip, Ron Riley, Art Roberts. I'll go all night long like Lionel Richie. I did with my guys. Dex Card, you know, Dick Biondi, Bob Surratt later on, who brought Dick back. I give so um these guys were in another realm. They were music to music what the what sports radio was in the nineties. The same type of situation. So that Dick Biondi's a legend and he got batted around. And what the thing he said was, Aldo, on one of these was, I'll tell you what. The girls are wearing their skirts so short, they're parting their hair in two places now. <laughs> Gone. 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 Back then. Now, back in 65, 65. Yeah. I think he was there 66, 67, and he was gone. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, I, I can see. pretty graphic for the 60s. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. For for uh, uh, airways, public airways, FCC yeah, is going to frown waxing, on that. I think waxing, a lot of people didn't wax back then. So <laughs> Yeah. And, but, and then you think about what a few years later, you know, uh, other – Radio stars like Howard Stern and Steve Dawson, oh, things that were much more graphic, right? Well, yeah, but I think Beyond he opened the door for a lot yeah. of them. You Absolutely. don't work in 26, 24, 25. I mean, they listed the stations here. Uh -huh. And like I always like to do on this solemn, uh, we like the Cumberland Chapels. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Mm -hmm. We They're did uh, we did Alan Arkin earlier along. Now we're doing Dick Beyond. If this would have been awake on the same day, some of those mom pops stores couldn't handle two people. That's right. You have plenty of chapels there. You'd mm -hmm. have Arkin over here and you have Biondi over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Dick may still be, I mean, he died the 26th. So I don't know. It's a private service they're going to have. God bless Dick Biondi. And then probably they may have the the, the food afterwards at uh, Pennyville Station, uh, which is at 112 Main Street, Park Ridge. Go in and see Tony Antonacci, Tino Antonacci, have some pasta, have a glass of wine, relax, have some fun, and that's it. And we couldn't do this show without both sponsors. So, uh, like I said, Dick Biondi to me, he's an all time. I mean, I learned how to do certain things from certain people energy, passion, Dick Biondi. Learning how to work uh, drops, Wally Phillips. Maybe later on, Dan McNeil worked a lot of drops. I learned how to do that because I came in cold. But I learned from each person, uh, Art Roberts, you know, all these people. But Dick Biondi was the most popular rock and roll DJ. I think the argument now is, is he the most recognizable? He was written up today in the papers like he was Ernie Banks yeah. you know, of, 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 uh, of, of radio. And he's one of the all members. Yeah. He was, uh, and he was way. he was a national superstar, but he you know he really his the the better part of his career were his years here in Chicago, and the Chicago City Council years ago named a street after him, Dick Beyond Way. So uh, his connection with Chicago is so so strong. Well, here's the thing, Aldo. He was national even when he was on LS, okay. because at, he was on and everybody listened to WLS around okay. the country. You could get the signal. Uh, but yeah, here's some of the stations: W I N R, W C B A, K V O B, K S Y L, W H O T, W K B W, W E B R, W L S, K R L A, W C F L, W M A Q, W B E Z, W S A I, W N N B, W B B M F M, W J M K, and W L S. Amazing. So, and there was not like where I could do radio from my house. Mm -hmm. You had to move. <laughs> That's right. We want you to do radio in Myrtle Beach. Really? Yeah. You have to move mm -hmm. back then. You didn't have this. So uh he was born Virgo. God bless. God, he just missed we missed our birthdays by three days. September 13th, 1932. Wow. Uh died June 26th, uh at the age of 90 years old. Uh and I'll tell you, at the time is up, he's married to Maribeth. So there was no children. Uh, his obituary uh, mentions no surviving children, so we don't know. I didn't know that much about Dick personally, except the fact I got to meet him a couple times. And it was huge meeting Dick Biondi, as big as meeting anybody else. 
And and uh, did he? He never uh, ventured into television, or did he? No, I don't yeah. think so. I think there was always videotape or film of him. Sure. Yeah. You know, at, at, at concerts or opening for the Beatles. And, right. But he never really did a whole lot of that stuff. He was just mm -hmm. solid radio guy. And here's the thing, too, that I didn't know about him. I guess it's in our blood. He hated to take vacations, which I did. I hated to go off the air. Loved being on the air. Hated to take vacations. And uh, never missed a day. Mm -hmm. I never, like me. And that's when you love something. And so I just wanted to say that uh, on behalf of uh, Eldo and I, to the man who got a T-shirt he was wearing, signed by Elvis Presley, to the man who played the Beatles and introduced them at Comiskey Park, or it might have been the amphitheater back into the day. When we talk on this show, somebody big just died. He was as big as it gets in radio in Chicago. Dick Biondi, ladies and gentlemen. Eldo? Yep, and to all of his uh, family members and fans and and friends, uh, our condolences, uh, Dick Biondi, uh, rest in peace. We'll see you next time on Somebody Big Just Died.